Hi, this is Scott Thomas from AboutTheInn.com, and today we're talking about uh, making a custom Facebook page using their new iframe method. Uh, the iframe method is going to be the only method they allow after they make the changeover. In the past, they allowed what they called static FBML pages, Facebook markup language pages, which were like uh, just creating sort of the inside of a web page, just the inner portion of it. Uh, if you can make a simple web page now, you can host it on your own web server and you can include it into a Facebook uh, page with uh, an iframe. An iframe is like a little window that shows a page from another site. So that's what we're going to look at today is the way that you can do that. So to get started, I've created a little page uh, here on the BrewsterHouse.com website uh, under the FB directory for Facebook and the name of the file is index.html. You can see it's a very simple file. It just has a couple of pictures and a little bit of text. But in reality, because this sits on a normal web server and not out on the Facebook site, you can do a lot more with these pages than you could do uh, with one that's integrated into Facebook. At least you can do it more easily. So we'll, uh, we'll begin and we'll be including this file into a Facebook page. To begin, there is uh, an application called the developer application, which you need to add. In order to, order to do that, you have to essentially um, connect to that application. So what you do is go to facebook.com slash developers, and do be sure that you're logged in as yourself and not as your page. So if you're using Facebook as a page, you'll want to switch back to yourself before you do this. At any rate, once you do that, you come to developers. Uh, if if you have not used it before, it will ask you to grant permission to access your data. You'll need to do that. Uh, then uh, you can go ahead and, and set up your application. Once you click on set up a new application, it will ask you the name of the application and to agree to the terms of service. Now I'm not going to click on these because I've already gone beyond that point in this application. Uh, and the next thing that it will do if you have not yet validated yourself as a developer is it will ask you for either a credit card number or perhaps the less expensive route which would be to uh, give it your telephone number, your cell phone number, and it will send you a text message with a code that you can enter in. Once you've entered that in, it will then take you to a screen uh, where we'll be able to see how to configure the application. Let's see. I need to get to where mine is. Let's see. My application that I've already created is called Welcome, and you can see it here on the right-hand side of the screen. So I'm going to go into that, and all I've done is create an application, and I gave it an address. So there's an entry called Canvas URL, and I can um, I've entered in here the address on the Brewster House website, http. Uh, colon slash slash www.brewsterhouse.com slash fb and I do need the closing trailing slash there. Uh, I have chosen to make this an iframe type of, of application. You can choose FBML but those will be disallowed uh, in the not too distant future. Then I've also indicated somewhere uh, on the screens of it that the file name is, is index.html. I'm going to go to the settings so we can see what some of those settings were. So here I can change the name from welcome to something else if I would like. And uh, those are the only parts of this one that I've changed. I've done nothing else on this. Now uh, if I go to Facebook integration, I can see that the Canvas URL, which we saw earlier, is uh, www.brewsterhouse.com slash fb slash. And it is of the type of iframe. And then I'm going to scroll down, and I can choose to show scroll bars, which means if my web page is bigger than Facebook allows, the scroll bar will show, and you can slide around to see any additional overflow section. Or I can auto resize everything to fit. And you can choose whichever you're happy with when you see how it looks. Um, you can set other options like social discovery and so on. It's entirely up to you. I've set the page tab name to welcome and that tab is kind of a misnomer because under the former setup of Facebook tabs were across the top now on pages they're down the left side so in this case the welcome will appear on the left side the tab type is an iframe and the URL is index.html so that will be ultimately the end of it we would then scroll down and click uh, save changes if we're finished with that now in our case we're done with that so I'm going to go back to my applications 
and I will go to this application's profile page. Now I see that and I can add it to my page. It asks me which page because I have several pages so I'm going to choose um, add to page and it has added it to a particular one of my pages. So now what we want to do is skip over to that page which we'll see and we'll take a look at. And now uh, returning to the Brewster House page we'll scroll down because all of what used to be the tabs at the top are now on the left side and you'll see as we come over here there is a welcome entry here now that one is the old static FBML the old style welcome page that we had created so that's not the one we're looking for so in this case I'm going to scroll down with more and we see the milk the welcome with the uh, small gear things here and that is it so I'm going to click on that and we should see there there's our page it has been loaded now in this window and as we scroll down you can see the entire thing is there so that's how we will create an iframe page uh, it's sitting on another server entirely but it puts it within Facebook hope you've enjoyed this this is Scott from about the end.com